G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I'm going to do an unboxing, but it's not much of a spectacular one. Look, there it is. Isn't that fantastic? Um, this is something really interesting, actually. I'm going to show you what it is. Can you guess what it is? Well, you've probably seen the title of the video. That's probably a bit of a giveaway, but this is a piece of Borg eyewear. Well, you know, it's actually a video display for FPV, and it's kind of a clever little thing. It's The idea is that if you have... Uh, your glasses like so, see I bought these glasses specially and spared no amount of money in doing this review. Um, if you've got a set of glasses, you can stick this on there. It's a bit like the Google Glass, you know, you put, put this on here. So it means you can see out your good eye or see out one eye whilst seeing the video from the camera in the other eye. And the reason that this is so useful is because in some countries, including the United States of America, there is a law that kind of says the pilot must have the aircraft in view, unaided line of sight, at all times and if you're flying FPV well you can't see the model because you've got goggles on your eyes and even if you're using an LCD screen the moment you look away from the model at the LCD screen in theory you're breaking the regulations and if they decide to get all snotty it can leave you in a rather invidious position so this could be a way around it now this is sort of like it's an FPV monocle it's one half of a pair of FPV glasses as you can see there's a lens inside there is an LCD with a backlight on the side we've got a little USB type connector which takes the video in and the power in. Comes with these little rubber frames, quite soft, and these have got little suction cups on them to stick onto your glasses. I can probably, oops, can I probably have to spit on it or something? No, actually they stick pretty good. See that's kind of well stuck on there. Actually it is, it's not going to come off very easily. Um, oh, there you go, here it go, pop when I pulled it off perhaps. Um, so yeah, what you do is you position this so to get the best field of view on your glasses, push it on. And if you don't have glasses, if you normally don't wear glasses, then get some of these. These are sunglasses for nighttime, I suppose, because they don't have a tint in the lens. They're just clear polycarb with a UV 400. Yeah, I bet $2 from the local um, $2 shop. I bet you they're really prop on a $6. I got ripped. Look at that. $6 these cost me. And uh, if you don't wear glasses, you can just wear these and put this on because it's not going to affect your vision looking through this part. So you, the idea is that you'll still be able to keep a clear view of your model whilst at the same time, if you're flying a multi-rotor, being able to frame up for a good video shot or something, because this can be connected to your, your video downlink so you can frame up the shot, get everything just the way you want it without taking your eyes off the model. Now, it could be an alternative to having the LCD screen plonked on the front of your transmitter that a lot of people tend to do these days. Because sometimes when you're flying for aerial video purposes, you not only need to be able to line up the shot, but you need to be aware of things around you. You don't want to drift backwards into a tree or power lines or something like that. So if you're working on your own, which you shouldn't, you should always have an observer, but there's some people work on their own. If you're doing that, then this will give you a bit of extra security if it works, because you will be able to see the model and what's around it, as well as the video picture and the framing that's coming down. So that's the theory. Now it comes with instructions. And here are those instructions. Look, aren't they wonderful? It's a very long instruction sheet. Actually, the other side is English, which makes life a whole lot simpler, but not necessarily any easier. Um, these are pretty Chinglish, actually. So uh, I'll find some good bits and read them out, shall I? Here we go. The safety precautions are pretty cool. Operation as the manual instruction. Contact with authorized repairers when the products have trouble. Otherwise, the warranty will be delegalized. Avoid falling down or crashing when using the products. Such actions will cause the life, what is it? Display or display a damage or display abnormal. This kind of failure is out of warranty. Please do not use this product when the temperature below zero. So it's only for, not for cool people, it's just for all the rest of us. So there you go. Um, yeah, it explains it a bit, but um, I don't think there are going to be too many problems using this. One thing, the, the specifications, I love this. Um, it is 432 by 240s. That's not even, it's QVGA roughly. And it says similar to white light 640 by 480. Similar but completely different. Um, and we've got a viewing angle of 26 degrees. So it's not that wide. And this is the key thing 3.5 to 5 volts operation. And then here I can see some real trouble looming because this is the lead they provide. Excuse me while I adjust the focus. Here we go. Look at that's magic. The magic of the automatic camera. Anyway, so. They give you this cable, it's got a USB type connector, mini USB on that end. And on the other end here, it's got a jack plug that you'd plug into your video source. That'll be your FPV receiver or whatever. And here it's got a JST connector. Now, there's no regulator in there. So if you plug a, even a two cell JST in here, 
all the magic smoke will come out of your rather expensive little view piece here. Um, so you're going to have to put a UBEC in here. You're going to have to cut this lead. Make sure you put a UBEC in. Do not, do not use this without a UBEC. Or smoke will come out of this at a great rate, and you'll have blown your I think 60 or 70 bucks. Not cheap, but really, if you consider half the price of a set of FPV glasses, it would probably be you know 150 to 200 bucks. So, it, but comparatively speaking, it's not that expensive. But this is going to kill some people. Absolutely, if you buy one of these. Do not use this lead without putting a UBEC in there or you will pay the price eventually. You'll stuff it up, you'll forget and you know mess it up and then you've blown up your little device. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this up and I'm going to set up FPV camera. We'll have a look and see what the picture looks like because I don't see any way, just immediately looking at the instructions, I don't see any way to adjust things like brightness and contrast and all that sort of stuff. So this could be a bit of a limitation if you, you might have to tweak your camera to get the necessary um, you know, changes to the picture so it looks good. Bit of a letdown, it'd be nice if it did have those adjustments, but let's see what it looks like anyway. Okay, I've got the Hobby King uh, Auto Scan, or the Eternity Quantum, all these names, Auto Scan receiver here set up. I've got my mini quad over in the other corner of the room with the camera going. As I said, don't use this thing without a UBEC like I do, but I'm using my bench supply and I've got 4.3 volts going to go into this thing, which is well below the 5 volt maximum through this lead here, which is connected to my bench supply, red to positive and black to negative so when i plug this in no smoke should come out we hope fingers crossed let's see what happens nothing happens at all oh <laughs> i'll cut this bit out you won't see this um i didn't plug the power in. let's plug in the power and see what happens see if we get any lights or anything coming out of this thing we should get a nice image which hopefully i'll be able to get lined up on the camera let's try it and see here we go Oh, can I get the plug-in? One thing with GS JSTs, always make sure that you don't put them in backwards. It can really ruin your day. Is this the right way around? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Oh, <laughs> I just turned off my bench supply. I want to show you something here. Chinese quality control <laughs> strikes again. Oh, no. Um, I have a JST male here and a JST female. Now, you know how that works. You plug one into the other and electricity flows. But I'm going to show you something. I'll just uh, have a look here. Hopefully you can see this. I might just zoom in a bit. Hang on. Here are the leads. As you can see, there's a there's a little divot in one. There's a little divot in there, and this is supposed to go in here. So you can see where that's got the little keyway on that side. So one would assume that this goes together. See how they fit there? And there's a bevel as well. These go together like this, right? So I'll plug these in like this. You're going to notice something when I take my hands away. Can you see them? See what's wrong here? Ah. Uh, I mean, this. Um, if I'd plugged that in, the smoke would have come out because I'm pretty sure that they mean the red wire to be positive and the black wire to be negative. But the way this is done at the moment, um, I'd be putting reverse polarity into this thing. Now, is it this that's wrong or is it that that's wrong? I don't know. I've got a battery here somewhere with, with a connector on it. So I'm going to have a look at where are we? I've got some more JST leads. Where's another battery with a JST plug on it? Hold on. I'll unplug the receiver because that's got. I know this plug is wired around the right way correctly. So let's have a look here. This, if this plug here goes in correctly, I'm not going to actually unplug this because I don't want that smoke coming out. If this plug goes in correctly, then it's the JST I bought from Hobby King that's crook. No, see that's, the battery's correct. It's this lead that came with the eyepiece that is wired incorrectly. Oh my goodness. Um, hmm. But I'm not going to just even rely on the colour coding there because I just don't trust it. What I'm going to have to do now is actually check the pinouts on this. But even that's probably not going to be USB standard because it's not a standard USB connection. Oh, what do you do? What do you do when you get gear like this which is obviously just waiting to be exploded? <laughs> and, uh, um, this is part one of the video. I'm going to have to go away now and strip this down and have a look. But I, this has turned into a really interesting video because I've shown you never assume anything. What the hell's going on in here? Now see, these are joined. There's a, there's a splice in the wire here. Have they spliced this such that this, the wire colours may be incorrect? Perhaps they have got negative on the red and positive on the black. I have to check all this before I can test this, or I'm just asking for a little fire on my bench and 60 bucks down the drain. Or having said that, um, Banggood sent this to me for review. They said, do you want to review something? I said, just I'd like to review that because I think it's got huge potential. If it works as advertised, obviously at the moment it would not work as advertised. I would be really risking the smoke coming out. So I'm going to go away and check that out. So that's part one of a video. I will, it's getting late in the day, I can't do this tonight. But I want to put this up because I want everyone to see, in case you're buying one of these, 
beware, beware. You could be buying some Chinese fireworks. So yeah, there you go. Stay tuned. The part two will be coming up very shortly. Bye for now.